Hi, welcome to this tutorial on transformations of graphs for trig functions. And what we're going to look at in this tutorial is the transformation y equals f of kx, where k is a positive constant. And we're going to base it on these three trig graphs, which I hope you're familiar with. That is y equals sine x, y equals cos x, and y equals tan x. Now, the transformation y equals f of kx represents a stretch parallel to the x-axis, scale factor 1 over k, where the y-axis is invariant. That means that any points on the y-axis stay put. They don't move. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is we're going to look at the graph of y equals sine x. So if we took the graph of y equals sine x, I've made f of x the sine x. You should be familiar with the graph. There you go, the graph of y equals sine x, a wave that goes between minus 1 and 1. And I've drawn this graph going from minus 360 degrees to 360 degrees. So what happens then if we took this graph? y equals f of 2x. That is, we replace the x in sine x with a 2x. So we get sine of 2x. Now according to this transformation, which you should know, it applies to all graphs, whether it be a trigonometric function or some other graph, what we've got is that k is 2, and this represents a stretch parallel to the x-axis, scale factor 1 over 2, scale factor a half in other words, where the y-axis is invariant. So what that's going to mean is that this point here on the y-axis is going to stay put. But where we see that x is 90 degrees, for instance, and you've got a y-value of 1, this point is now going to be pushed in, squeezed in if you like, and this point then is now going to appear at not 90 degrees, but half of 90 degrees, 45 degrees. At 45 degrees, you should expect to see this peak at 1. This point here at 180 degrees, which is on the x-axis, will now appear at half this distance down here at 90 degrees. This point down here, minus 1 at x is 270 degrees, is now going to appear at half this value of 270 degrees, 135 degrees. And the same is going to happen on the left here. All these points on the curve are going to be squashed up towards the y-axis. And it's best seen if I just draw this graph for you. Here it is, okay, and you'll see what I was hopefully trying to explain to you. That this point here at 90 degrees, y was 1, it's now still at 1, but it's occurring at half this distance, at 45 degrees. The point at 180 degrees is now halved, it's now occurring at 90 degrees. This point here at 270, negative 1, is now this point here, occurring halfway between 90 and 180, which is 135 degrees. And you'll notice the same has happened on the left-hand side. Look, this point here at minus 270 and 1 is now up here at minus 135, 1. So, you can see that the graph, the red graph of sine x, is squashed in by a scale factor of a half, okay, from either side towards the y-axis. Well, here's another graph. I want us to look at the graph of y equals f of a half x, x over 2. We're replacing any x in sine x with x over 2. And that gives us the graph now 
of sine x over 2. So in this example, k is now a half. The k we have here is a half. So what's this going to mean? Well, it's going to be a stretch parallel to the x-axis, scale factor 1 divided by a half. 1 divided by a half is 2, so it's going to represent a scale factor of 2, a stretch parallel to the x-axis, scale factor 2. Let's draw this graph on, see what happens, and then we can talk about it. There it is there. So, if we have the sine x graph, the red one here, what's happened to, say, this point here at 90 degrees 1? It's been stretched by scale factor 2. So instead of being 90 degrees out, we double that, and that peak of 1 is occurring at twice 90, which is at 180 degrees. There's the peak of 1. And the sine x graph cut the x-axis here at 180 degrees. But in this example of the sine of a half x, we double that. And double 180 degrees, you get 360 degrees. And you can see it's zero. So we're pulling this part of the sine x graph out. We're stretching it by a scale factor of 2. This part of the graph would carry on underneath here and it would be a lot longer, OK? Stretched out. And look what happens on the left hand side. It's this part of sine x which gets stretched out by a scale factor of 2. This point at minus 90 minus 1 now occurs at minus 180 minus 1. And where it intersected the x-axis at minus 180, it's now pulled out by a factor of 2 to minus 360 degrees. Okay, well I hope that's given you an idea of how this transformation, y equals f of kx, works. What I'm going to do now is we're going to look at the graph of y equals cos x, and I'm going to leave you with a few sketches to draw. OK, well, here we have the graph then of y equals cos x, f of x being the cos x. You should be familiar with the graph, OK? As you can see, it goes from minus 1 to 1 and crosses the x-axis of minus 270, minus 90, 90 degrees and 270 degrees. Now, what I'd like you to do is to try and sketch the graphs then of y equals f of 2x, that's replacing the x in cos x with a 2x, and also to sketch the graph of y equals f of a half x, that gives cos of a half x, or x over 2. OK, so you might like to pause the video and come back and we'll just run through this. OK, welcome back if you've had a go. And let's now look at this first graph, the cos of 2x. k is the 2, and that's going to mean that this represents a scale factor of 1 over 2, a half. So it's a stretch, scale factor a half, parallel to the x-axis. So this curve is going to be squashed in, if you like, by a scale factor then of a half. And what should you have got? Well, you should have got a graph looking like this. So you can see that on the original graph, let's take, say, this point here at 180 degrees minus 1. It's now squashed in to this point. It was originally 180 degrees out. Scale factor half means that it's now at 90 half the 180, giving us the 90, and it's now at minus 1. And look at this peak here, OK? This came from this peak up here. The cosine x graph peaked at 360 degrees, it was 1. Now if we halve that, 
we get 180 degrees still peaking at 1. The same happens on the left hand side here, okay? This point here at minus 180, negative 1, now is squashed in to minus 90 degrees and at minus 1. And hopefully you can check out all the other points. And with this one, y equals f of a half x cos of a half x, hopefully you got this graph pulled out by a scale factor of 2. Because remember, k is a half, 1 divided by a half is 2. So I've pulled the original graph of y equals cos x out by a scale factor of 2. Remember the y-axis is invariant, so points on the y-axis stay put. This point here at 90 degrees got pulled out by a factor of 2 to this point. This point down here at 180 degrees minus 1 gets doubled to 360 degrees minus 1. And the same applies on the left hand side here. OK, well that's cosine x and its transformations when we look at y equals f of kx. So what we've got to look at now is the graph of y equals tan x. And again, I'll give you a few to do here. Now what I've got here then is the graph of y equals tan x. Let f of x be tan x. It's a graph that hopefully you're familiar with. We've got asymptotes at minus 270, minus 90, 90 degrees and 270 degrees. It's where the curve basically heads off towards, never goes past these lines, these dotted lines. OK, well what I'd like you to do is, if possible, have a go at sketching y equals f of 3x. That's going to be replace the x in tan x with 3x, so we get tan 3x. And also to try this graph, y equals f of x divided by 3, a third x. So we end up with the graph of tan of a third x. So you might like to pause the video and come back and check your answers. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, you're most probably going to get quite a mess actually uh, on your graph because if we draw this graph, the graph of y equals f of 3x, that's tan 3x, you should end up with a graph looking something like this, okay? A lot of curves, so it's quite compact. What's actually happening? Well, the k value is 3. So that means that we've got a stretch of scale factor parallel to the x-axis, scale factor 1 over 3, a third. So everything gets bunched up towards the y-axis by a scale factor of a third. So take, for instance, this part of your curve, OK, on y equals tan x. It still goes through the origin, but we've now got this part of the curve instead of this part of the curve. Instead of it going up to an asymptote at 90 degrees, we've got a third of that, which is an asymptote at 30 degrees. So you've got a dotted line, if I was to put it in, coming down through here at 30 degrees. And as for this part of the curve of y equals tan x, well, it's bunched up more to the y-axis this way. Instead of the asymptote being at minus 90 degrees, it's now coming through here at minus 30 degrees. Take, for instance, now this part of the curve where it crosses the x-axis at 180 degrees. We've now got a third of that, and that's 60 degrees. So you're looking at, really, this part of the curve through here. OK, which corresponds to this part of the curve. I hope you can see that. And as for this part of the curve, well, it is now this part down here. OK, bunched up. And you've got this repetition throughout the graph. OK, let's have a look at the other one. What did you get for that? Well, for 
f of a third x, k is a third, and that is that we have a scale factor of 1 over a third. 1 divided by 3rd is 3. So we're pulling out the original graph of y equals tan x by a scale factor of 3, parallel to the x-axis. So our asymptotes, 1 at 90 degrees, is now pulled out to 3 times that, 270 degrees. So you can see the graph is going towards that 270 degrees, both in this direction and in this direction. And where we've got this part of the graph, it's now appearing down here. It crossed at 180 degrees, so you've got three times that. It's going to now cross the x-axis way down here at 540 degrees. Okay, So that curve will be heading towards 540 degrees. Alright, anyway, so... Hopefully you've got an idea of what happens then when we apply this transformation y equals f of kx where k is a positive constant. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial.